Good morning or almost good afternoon to all. It's always difficult to start when you are with three brilliant interventions before. And I would say for a start that I would subscribe all of them because I think that it's an easy thing to do, is to subscribe what is well organized, well studied, well said about what is happening in a part of Africa that probably could spread around to all of Africa. And this is the first point that I wanted to make to you. As you can see uh, and from my presentation, I'm European. But I respect Africa. I understand that Africa has a different part, is a different part of the world, it has a different identity and should be respected by the international community. That barely happens. If you can see to Africa, and allow me, allow me this small introduction, if you look to the international community and how they see Africa, they look at it by their own and specific interests. Look, for instance, what is said already today, where the military bases are. They are where those countries have interests. You could talk about the policies or the, the, the foreign uh, uh, policies of the United States, of Russia, of China, and you have seen they are trying to get into Africa because they have interests. Look for the resources, look for the money, look for the interests, and you'll find those countries. Look for the interests of Africa, and you will probably not find those countries. So this is the first point, is to call for the international community and tell them, and try to understand, and try to, to transmit to those that are the policy makers and the political leaders to look to Africa as a continent, an important part of the world that until now was almost hidden, but suddenly we are trying to look at it as the source of giving us resources. For instance, it was spoken today by Peter about the new problems in Mozambique. Why are there problems in Mozambique? Why now? Only because Jihad is going south? Or is it, again, look for the money, look for the resources, because in the north of Mozambique, they have not only the gas, because the gas is already concessed, but for the other, the stones, for uh, uh, the emeralds, for the rubies, I'll go back to you later on this, because it is a part of the financement of the groups also. And that is the main question that I wanted to put to you today. I don't want to talk about terrorism. Who preceded me did it wonderfully. I want to be the terrorist. I want to be the provocator here about the discussion. I want to call your attention about what you are going to, to speak about. Why speak about East Africa when you all know what is already going on? It was said here, the problems of Somalia are well known. The problems of Mozambique, we'll, we'll talk about them a little bit probably. But what is important here is, and allow me to say that it's not only about terrorism that we have to talk about when I'm talking about Africa. We have to, in fact, many of the actions that we talk about in Africa are because of governments, because of criminal actions, because of ethnical problems, not because of borders, because of tribes, not because I'm looking for a new kind of spreading my religion, my influence, but because I want to be the new power, instead of looking to this only as a terrorist action, look at this also as an event or a beginning of a civil war, with a bit of exaggeration, of course, but look at this on all of the aspects that we have here. And when we looked at, George, well said, uh, George Orwell said it, terrorism is terrorism, but you have to see all the other dimensions. The dimensions of oppression, of torture, of power, of replacement. Because many times what is the biggest aim is replace who is in power, replace who are the leaders, because we are looking for something different there in those countries. So respecting Africa and the way to respect Africa is not to bring the solutions for the African countries, but as we can, help the Afri African countries to get their own answers. General said, as a strategic uh, 
policy to help Nigeria when they had money. They didn't beg for anything. They're trying only to keep the country as a whole. And there are, other, uh, there are a lot of other situations in Africa that we have to look to in the same way. First of all, regional cooperation. This, the presentation said, I've worked in Africa for seven, in, seven pla in seven places, in seven moments. And the most effective way to bring together solutions are making countries cooperate regionally. And you can see by the different parts of Africa to do that. It's easier for one nation by itself to do it. You have to be aware of the strategic relevance of Africa in the world. That is one of the reasons, beyond the reasons of resources, there's one of the reasons why there are fights in Africa, because you have the sea routes, you have the situation of the, the, the Red Sea, you have the control of resources and the spread of resources, and not only that. It was said here, uh, un passage by Peter, uh, that the problem of several parts is uh, drug traffic. It's a main problem in several parts of Africa. If, for instance, if you call, and allow me to do this, for uh, the former Portuguese colony, Guinea, that is called for some a non-state anymore, because it was the entrance. It was coming south, not because of terrorists' willness, but because they wanted to have access to the harbor. And it said it was called the high, Highway 10, because the drug came from South America and went through Africa towards Europe. And this is talking again about the international cooperation that is needed. I spoke about the United States, I spoke about Russia, and I spoke about China. And where is Europe here? When, I think it was Ambassador that said, he never referred to Europe. He said Italy, France, Germany. And that is another major mistake. That is, Europe doesn't have a global approach towards these countries and towards this continent, and it should have. Besides, in spite of the efforts of Commissioner uh, Federica Mogherini, they're still in, in place, to do something different towards Africa. And there was a true evolution for the past five years in the Europe approach to Africa. But the countries in Europe haven't been looking to Africa, and they should. They see Africa like in the past. They want to import the, the Western models to Africa. That is a big mistake because they don't understand the culture, they don't understand the history, they don't understand the organization, and they don't understand the future of Africa. Of course, I told you, uh, Dr. Shea presented me like a, a, a former uh, World Bank expert working in Africa. And this was the first problem that we had when we start to work. That is, we had to look to Africa but understand where we were and not what we were bringing with us. And this is not easy, especially for those that finance those kind of activities because they want to control. They believe that the others are all corrupt. And probably they are. Most probably they are. But it's probably the price you have to pay because the system of government in those countries is totally different of what we are used to. And so, the approach has to be like that. It has to be different. If we want to support those countries, we have to know how to help them, but with the connection to regional authorities, to local authorities, and try to spread not our message, but the message that we want and all of us want, that is peace, humanity, and good organization. Of course, I prepared a, a, a PowerPoint, as you can see, but after listening to my colleagues, I said to myself, why speak about the same things? Why don't call for your attention as, I told you, provoking a discussion here and trying to have a different approach to this situation. Just wanted to point two or three, 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 uh, two or three things that uh, I've thought about. That is, first of all, when we look to all of the conflictual situations in Africa, and I'll try to do it a bit faster, don't look at them all 
as terrorist attacks. Look at them mainly and in many times, criminal actions. Of course, part of them are criminal actions in order to get some money, to get some resources to finance terrorism or other activities, to finance the change of government in some countries probably, but in truth, they are probably not only terrorism, they are criminal actions. Overthrown governments, ethical um, violence, or altogether. And probably you can't look at this only in one way, and only in one view, and only in one perspective. Of course, until now, there have been several international actions towards those countries. United Nations, isolated countries, uh, all the agencies are working there. But are they effective? Are we looking to Africa strategically? And I, I, I know what I, I'm saying because, for instance, one of my experiences when I got to one of those countries that I was an expert, uh, I think then it wasn't the World Bank, it was the, the European Union, but it's the same. I got there to speak with the Minister of Finance and suddenly he said, but uh, what are you doing here? Well, you applied for some kind of financial aid for this purpose. Oh yeah, okay, thank you, but I have, and he opened his drawer and he said, I have here five studies exactly with the same theme, so we don't need that study. It seems stupid, but it's real. So, in why? Because there's no global strategy towards this. There's no global strategy of one organization. There's no global strategy of the entire organizations. They just don't cooperate properly in order to help the Kansas with what they need. So, great, it's nice. A minister goes to a meeting in Brussels or whatsoever and he said, um, well, I need a study over the organization of my uh, taxation system. And there's a report about that. And there's somebody, a bureaucrat, that will read it. And there will be a politician who would say, great, great idea. That is exactly what they need. But they forgot that they sent that to 20 different governments that will support the same study of something that they don't need because they already had it. And so what is this all about? You're spending 20 times money that you could use for something good be proper. And this would happen if we had a whole strategy towards these countries inside regional or probably international organizations. I could t tell you and talk to you about some experiences I have in Africa and some were delicious, but it's not about this. And you're not expecting me to speak about this. You are expecting me to speak about the conflicts the wars, what is bad? But isn't this bad? Losing the opportunities of helping those countries to develop nationally, regionally, and internationally? Isn't this bad? Not creating a whole strategy towards developing a continent that we, the Europeans, as all of the internationals, always looked as a poor partner? An obedient partner? So what I'm trying to say to you, in spite of I agree with everything that my colleague said is, we have to look to this in a different way, in a different perspective, and of course, terrorism exists, terrorism will exist, terrorism will grow, and we have to stop it. But the main way to do this, probably, is to help the regional and local governments to do this, to connect with the local communities, of course, because they, they are, the local communities are the first step to stop the growth of terrorism, the first degree to stop these countries, these movements to go south, like we are saying, or go east, as I was supposed to talk about, but first step that we can help those countries is to look at it with respect. And that I think we have to try to do. I'll try to jump on this. Uh, the, my PowerPoint is available to the organization. 
I think it is available to everybody. So I will not read it, and I will try to again be provoking until the end. But there is a point that I wanted to make, and I will go over the countries. Everybody knows this, of course, and everybody knows about Al Shahab. But this is here for one reason. This is here for only one reason. Not because the group is big and is strong, but look at the organization. The organization is not only the operational, but the intelligence also. Where do we see this? At governments, at states? Because we are looking towards taking care of territory. This you can see, we saw this in ISIS in Iraq and in Syria. And even there, what was their main purpose? Getting territory. What is the main purpose now in Africa also? Gaining territory. What do they want? Do they want to become a state? And if they didn't manage it one place, they will probably try to manage it another. How did we defeat them in one place? We got all together even with different interests. How can we defeat them in another place? Doing the same, cooperating, trying to, to go internationally towards a solution to these places. Well, uh, this is also some information that of course you have the financing of a terrorist group like al Shahab, and they even have a way to get funding by taxes. So again, we have here the structure, organization of a state. You have control of territory, you have power, you have organization, you have funding. Not funding that comes from criminal activities. You get funding coming from asking for a value to the citizens that are inside of the control zone. Mozambique. I wanted to call a, a special attention to Mozambique because of two reasons. First of all, because it's uh, a new development. For th three, four years, everybody was thinking or talking about what was happening in Mozambique because they had very conflict uh, violence in the north of the country. Suddenly, for the first time in last June, ISIS assumed the responsibility of one attack where five militaries were killed. This was the first time they did it. But even here, I want to call your attention for this. It probably doesn't have anything to do with ISIS, even though we know that they are coming down from Tanzania, going to, into Mozambique to again get some funding. And the report that I have about this is at least in 2018, they managed to get $36 million of what they stole, of stones, of, uh, of natural resources that they took from the north of Mozambique to finance their activities in the east of Africa, in Tanzania, and so on. But we have doubts, true doubts, that this has anything to do with ISIS. They call for it. Uh, they spread it on several uh, sites that all of the attacks were their responsibility. But we know, and it's our responsibility to know, that many times ISIS claims things that they have no kind of responsibility, just because they have a strategy of communication, that they are always ahead and on top and, cover, and covering or for even criminal attacks. So this is no more than a criminal attack probably, but again, you can't see and look to this isolated because this is probably a way of funding activities or terrorist activities in other countries. But the information I got two days ago, I was here in Israel, is that uh, how is the government of Mozambique uh, battling against this situation? What was their first reaction? Denial. There's no violence in the north of Mozambique. There's no terrorist attacks in North Mozambique. There are isolated things that happen in North Mozambique. Suddenly, it was assumed that they hired a group. Uh, I don't want to call it 
a mercenary group, but it's probably a mercenary group. It's a group that belongs to the international group of Blackwater. And they are bringing planes, helicopters, people that are being hired to defend interests. Interests of the government of Mozambique? No. Interests of the companies that are working there. But the government of Mozambique hired them also because they are connecting the interests that are there with the interests of the government that receive the financement for the other current government to pay to these groups. See what I mean? So, in fact, for sure, what one thing that we have there is violence. One thing that we have there is fear. One thing that we have there is people to being killed. And one thing that is becoming very disturbing is that there's no authority, that the militaries are not enough, they're not well organized and they had to hire, and we're talking of one of the poorest countries in the world, they have to hire an international, uh, how would I say it, an international, uh, perhaps, uh, 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 to defend third part interests. So, what can we do in East Africa? What can we do towards this? This is the debts that were announced and you can see them, the sites that are here referred also um, and the sources are here. Uh, but, and of course, like in other parts of Africa, there are big opportunities for recruitment recruitment for criminals, recruitment for terrorists, like here in East Africa, like anywhere, like Peter would probably say the same. It is, there are people that are poor, people that need money, people that don't have jobs, people that don't have education, people that are in general forgotten by their own governments. So we have to help them also on that level to try to make things different here in East Africa as in the rest of Africa. Of course, you have to be aware that this is, like Peter said, like General said, like Ambassador would say, it's a growing problem. The local governments, in many cases, are incapable to deal with this situation. When they don't manage to do it, they will buy private services to do it. It will cost even more expensive because they are military forces, the police forces that are unfortunately badly paid and corrupt and many times are part of the gangs instead of and part of the problem instead of part of the solution. And so we have here a major problem that we have to battle. Are these countries capable of doing it by themselves? No. Can we help them? Yes. How? Not with military presence. Of course, because they will not be accepted by local communities, but with foreign help, of course. What happens, it was uh, the conference in June, and uh, it was stated by the commander of the American troops in Africa uh, um, that the United States were not invested in more in military presence in Africa as they would since, not this last administration, but the administration before, but this one continued, because, again, they don't understand Africa and they don't understand how to deal with the problems. But there are others that are occupying those places. But each time they do it, they do it because they are looking for their own interests. Not because they believe in Africa or understand Africa. Because first of all are their interests and then are their cooperation. So if the national cooperation is not enough and the aim and the ability of the local governments, the national governments, is not enough. Let's rise the level to the regional organizations that are existing in all parts of Africa and are very well organized in order to do it. Recognize, let's recognize that there's a problem. Of course there's a problem. If there wasn't a problem, we were not here discussing it. Let's recognize that we have to have a different approach to this problem. And let's recognize that it's not an answer that we can give at the local European countries or the 
nation state countries by itself, but building a strategy. I had here, but I don't want to go this way, analysis that 10 years ago was done about Africa and about East Africa. You could see nine reasons 10 years ago that were written about the problems in East Africa. You know how many are present today? All of them, and probably even more. So it means that for a decade, we lost opportunities. We didn't do what we should do. Things that we already knew that would have to be done, and we forgot about them. But the others are, of course, always looking towards opportunities to come in. Even two days ago, I received a copy of the magazine of the youth of the Caliphate of ISIS, but only organized by the youth. It is easy to get to the minds to radicalize. And it said about Africa, it said, from the humanitarian worker to the coalition pilot, why did Africa become a threat? This author accused Western imperialism and racism, uh, and racism of looting resources disrupt the intellectual and social growth of continent inhabitants. What does this mean? It means, first of all, that they are looking to Africa to go in. Second of all, it means that if we don't look at Africa, they will occupy our place and they will not give this place to the Africans. I believe that I don't want to give solutions. I'm nobody to give solutions. I wrote them, but forget them. There was once said, and we we're talking about a Nobel Prize, that this would be a solution going through education. Even though I could support this sentence, of course, it's not enough. It's a part of a solution, but it's not enough. It's a way. But what it means is that we have to give power to the communities, to the people that are there. If we don't do that and we don't organize the people like this, you know what happened. If there are no jobs, if people don't have money, they will migrate. And that will mean that they will leave space for others to occupy it, giving the others the territory that they claim. So, I think that the main solution, in spite of the simple and single solutions, is to put the international community to look to Africa, respect it, but mainly trying to not think that Africa is the for forgotten partner that we only remember when we need them. And this only can happen if we call for help to everybody. And, and, and this is probably until now the biggest mistake, look to the identity of Africa and give it in the future because it's a richness and probably that is the problem that the international community had until now. Thank you very much.